Coming up on this week's show, we're talking about trends from the long forgotten elevated chainstay all the way to tubeless tires. And uh, we've got some of your custom efforts actually on display here from last week's show. Um, and we're feeling a little bit sore after some of this week's fails and bales and scents. And we get to know what you think about Neil's Aston Martin and how well did Blake really do hmm. at Valparaiso. It's, it's the a Dirt Shed, Shed Show. Okay, welcome to the Dirt Shed Show with Chain Reaction Cycles, of course, and look, Andrew Dodd! Hi guys! Oh my god, it's proper mountain biking, how are you? Yeah, really good, mate. Haven't nice seen you for ages, yes, it's lovely to have you here. Um, and I thought while you were here, we talk about trends in mountain biking because yeah. I was really interested in what you were saying earlier on today about what the consumer might think about trends. So tell the viewers what you thought. You were yeah, a little, little bit worried about what they think about trends. Well, I don't know. Sometimes it almost feels like stuff's invented just to make money. Ooh. Perhaps just throwing it out there. Yeah. Um, you know, arguably you only need a bike and a helmet. You can go and have some fun. You definitely you know, do can. You, do you really need all this new tech and all the new stuff that we've been told yeah. that we do? But that, that, some is fat, but some is really good. I well, think. that was my that was my my point where I thought this is really interesting because definitely some things are fads hmm. and 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 they get a little bit of buzz because maybe a pro uses it and yeah. maybe that pro has been given a bit of money to use it well, and the then, pro does really well uh, yeah, using it. Yeah, and and then we start to think, oh, you've got to have that thing and it, and it is it really it's a trend, but is it really useful? And then there are things that come in that then we think back how you, how did we ever get by without it oh 100% yeah. like i like the dropper post for instance like that's changed like, my riding yeah, life game changing right yeah. so i thought we'd go through some of the things that are uh, trends happening now and will they last the trends that really have changed our lives and some of the trends uh, yeah <laughs> best <laughs> forgotten yeah. best forgotten <laughs> right so let's start off with right here's a really good one this is a really good point i like this one check these uh. avs hand guards out. This one is a special one for Blake Sampson. AVS mm. sent this over for him, opened up the post and got this out. Now, Doddy, hand guards. Now, is this a trend that's going to stick around? They certainly look I don't cool. know. They've like, definitely got that thing of Sam Hill uses them. The thing is, and I said this on the tech show the other week, Sam Hill can ride that stuff. He's well yeah. known for being a bit different to everyone else. He rides fast enough, arguably, yeah. to need those when he races. <laughs> he also has a bit of a moto thing going on on his bike. Yeah. His mechanic, yeah. JC, cuts down mud guards for him to put on the back of the bike and they stick them up. So it's very supercross motocross. Yeah, yeah. But actually, I do think, despite the fact, despite the fact they feel like a fad, yeah. um, they're actually pretty useful. And I know that Blake and Neil are using them at the moment, mm. even though these ones say their names on here. Yeah. Um, and they've got some really thorny trails that they're riding out yeah, there. And actually, yeah. for hand protection, you really can't beat a specific product. But I'm not sure they're for everyone. Mm. I mean, I tell you what, I, I think they look awesome. They so do. I think if it ends up making your bike look good, I'm in. I like well, it. Well, um, I think they look terrible, to be honest. I think they look really cool if someone's riding towards you and yes. they've got a pair on. But when you put them on your own handlebars, oh, you they see, look yeah. disgusting. So you can see this, this metal part here yeah. that's, that's basically coming from the bars outwards. That doesn't look great. But also, the uh, reserved <laughs> person in me says, what happens if one of those bends is just going to bend all over your brake lever and pull your brake lever on? Oh, yeah. Well, see, we're on the fence on this one. Yeah. On the fence. On the fence. Right, what other trend can we be thinking about, Dolly? Uh, well, obviously, at the moment, it's got to be um, electronic wireless shifting. That's what everyone's oh, saying yeah. it's a fad or it's too expensive or yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever. Is but, this going to become something we all have to have? I'm. I'm unsure currently, but what I can say is that it hasn't been developed to make it like a fad. It hasn't been developed for the sake of yeah, developing yeah, it. It, is, it is higher performance shifting. If you forget the fact that it's wireless and electronic, yeah. it's just better. Yeah, yeah. However, it is insanely priced and all the rest of it. Mm, it's a tricky one, that one. I can't see it. I can't see it's going to trickle down. Because it's expensive yeah. gear. I just wonder, is it going to start being incorporated as part, especially on e-bikes, as part mm. of kind of like the whole bike? You oh, know, as, yeah, as a for one, sure. A one-build thing. So You think everything's you know, going to communicate? Yeah. The whole yeah. lot. So I, I quite like amazing. that. Right, um, back to a kind of bit of a fashion item. Yeah. Uh, the chin guard. Yeah. Now, when I was seeing this in Enduro helmets, they've mm. got these removable chin guards. So they're a full face helmet, but you can click off the chin guard. Suddenly you've got this pretty cool. I quite like the look of mm. it, actually. Like ear covering, sort of almost like motorcycle trials looking helmet, yeah. which, I, which I like, obviously. Um, it's not new that, though, is it? Isn't it? I think it's quite a new thing. It's not, it's not new. 
I've, no. got, I've got a little prop here for you. All right. This dates back to <laughs> approximately 1994. Holy crap, yes. So yeah, this right. is that comes up. They were first available as yeah. the Showy TL Comp, and then yeah. later became the Troy Elite Edge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can see where it's more yeah. of a motorcycle style helmet upper, and the oh, bolt-on jaw guard. That, that helmet is amazing. They've now done it. Nothing's that new. That nothing. isn't new. You're right. And I I wore that helmet. Right. Next up, wheel size. Oh my God. Talking trails. Wheel size. Wheel size. Have we all settled now that 27.5 and 29 are the wheels? That's it. That's the end of it. Pretty much, yeah. It's pretty much there. And then, of course, you're going to get smaller bikes and more budget conscious bikes that still have 26. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. But when there's so many more new innovations being made in 27 half and 29, you'd be a fool, to, I think. Yeah. To look elsewhere. I but think. you don't think one's going to win over and we're going to lose one of those now? No, I think the industry now has largely settled on the fact that they ride, they offer different things to the rider. Yeah. And yeah. also, there are issues. So, a taller rider like myself, mm -hmm. I don't tend to like the smaller wheels on certain bikes because they just don't feel quite as right. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to have that element for a shorter rider. He's going to have the issues with a bigger wheel getting in the way. Okay, next up, Doddy, tire inserts. Oh, yeah, okay. Like these, uh, like Cush Core. Super popular so these, got these Yeah, you've got these things you can, like, oh, Jesus. Hello. You, like, you put this in your, in your wheel and it basically stops you getting punctures. Is yeah. that kind of the idea? It does a little bit more than that. Go so, on. so it helps hold your tire on. Right. As well. Yeah. It protects your rim. It actually protects the tire. So when the tire bottoms against the rim, yeah. In an impact, so hopefully you won't be splitting your tire. But it also acts as a secondary form of suspension. Oh right. Think about it as a volume spacer for your tire. Yeah. Just like you would on a suspension fork. Oh, that's really so interesting. Adding a degree of progressiveness. Yeah. It's something that's really interesting. I was chatting to these guys yeah. just randomly by chance at a bike show recently. And they showed me some video footage of their theory why these are so important. And in particular, these ones, not any other type of, yeah. of these. Your tyre deflects when you hit an obstacle. Yeah. But basically, before the tyre has started springing back, the fork still hasn't done anything. So basically, you want to try and absorb as much of the impact as possible okay. before it's transmitted to the rider. That's incredible. Because that impact happens so fast, yeah. the suspension fork kind of react. So this could be moving into our game-changing arena, couldn't it? This is pretty good. It, it could. But yeah. my theory is, why do you want to buy an expensive wheel, an expensive tyre and set yeah. up and then still have to put something like this in? The way I would see the future would be either tyres incorporating some system like this, uh, or a rim incorporating yeah. some system. Yeah. So we put this in the evolving place. I think evolving, Evolving, yeah. evolving like Where it. they are now is yeah. really cool. Yeah, certainly a fun thing to have on set. I quite like it. I've seen <laughs> some other versions of this though, are much lighter and I sort of wonder yeah. if they... Yeah, well, the new proof do the odd system yeah, which yeah. weighs like 150 grams, so it's super yeah. light. Crazy, crazy. And okay. does a similar job. Could be, could be a trend that makes a big difference. Um, this is a good one I wanted to talk to you about. Now, the Athertons are creating their own bikes. Oh, Atherton yeah. bikes. Mm. Um, it's basically an evolution of robot bike, yep. which was a 3D printed, essentially, titanium. Te technically, I think you'll yeah. find it's called additive manufacturing. Additive Martin. manufacturing, that's correct. Yeah. Um, but, but that is powdered titanium yeah. that then becomes a formed lug of a bike and then they can basically build these to any kind of shape or form they want i think i think the, the, the thing that people overlook with this type yeah. of manufacturing is it's not there's not much waste when they do it the amount of material they use is what yeah. they need yeah. so they'll make all the lugs all of the lugs for the entire bike on one yeah lump. and it could basically come no on excess a material yeah, yeah it's no, incredible it's, it's really strange because they go there's a bike and it's just a little plank of metal and, and as far as i know yeah. it costs just the same to make a batch and then change the geometry and make another batch. It's not yeah. like they have to make a new frame jig or a yeah. new yeah. mould or anything else. So from a prototyping point of view, it makes perfect sense. But for everyone out there, you know, thinking about buying bikes and we're talking like the mass production of bikes here, is it a game changing trend? Is it what we're going to be buying in the future? Can we live without it? I think we can live without it. Yeah. yeah. But, but I think I'd put it in the evolution okay. tag okay. because there is benefits to be had yeah, yeah. from that technology. I like how we're building a little evolution pot. Yeah, this wasn't like in, a, in a script to start with, was it? Right, no, no. <laughs> um, why, right, let's get to some trends that, that you know, have changed our lives. And let's, yeah. well, let, let's just talk about why they have worked, okay? The first one, the dropper post. Like we oh, said at the top of the show, yeah. it's a game changer, but why? So I have said for a long time, I'd rather have a rigid bike with a dropper post than the other way around. I think Whoa. you could probably, and I reckon this is a video for, yeah. for maybe Neil to do or myself to make, I reckon you could tackle 
more severe terrain on a rigid bike with a drop post. Yes. Not, not suggesting it's faster, because it wouldn't be, mm -hmm. than you can on a suspension bike with a saddle all the way up. Oh, that is good. Because it's the about lowering your yeah. gravity, yeah. getting the saddle out the way that catches on your bits. And... Yeah. Well, I mean, body positioning is everything yeah. on a bike. And I mean, uh, the difference a dropper post makes, if you haven't used one, honestly, it's just like, oh. It's night and day. Oh, yeah. It's really, really is crazy. And I guess that's why it's so popular, because it really does work. And, mm. uh, and I think it comes into the bracket saying, like, disc brakes. When disc brakes come out at the start, it was a very difficult technology to make work on a bicycle. Yeah. Because you had to get the weight down for it to really to make sense mm -hmm. but the moment disc brakes started working it was like I, like night and day i just rejoiced in the fact that you could ride flat out yeah. down a wet hill and your brakes would work yeah there nice. wouldn't be that delay for them to dry out and anything yeah, to happen yeah. uh, you forget how bad brakes were oh, at terrifying point. yeah absolutely, absolutely i don't know how roadies lasted so long <laughs> <laughs> um another game changer i think um i couldn't live without lock on grips yeah, actually, Lock on although, grips. you know, some people are still big fans of regular grips for comfort reasons. Yeah, yeah. They make a lot of sense. But a lock on it, oh, it simplified my life so <laughs> much. There was nothing nicer than finishing off a bike and just putting the grips on the end, tighten them up. I just, oh, it makes uh, me, it gives me goosebumps thinking about how good that is. It's like, oh, done. Not like eh, eh, trying to push this piece of rubber on a bit of metal. Oh. It doesn't want to go on and you don't want to lube it too much because then it never sticks. Yeah, and, and then there's hairspray oh, and which hairspray is best. Yeah, and, oh, I used to actually used to use <laughs> WD-40. I'd spray a little bit really? of WD-40 on, put that on and just twist it a bit and it would stick. It would evaporate. But no yeah, but it, but it oh, could be a nightmare. Definitely mm. the one to get them off though, WD-40. That definitely works. Uh, what about tubeless wheels? Tubeless yep. tyres, that's a get, that, like, that felt like at the start, really? But now it's like... You're gone. removing rubber from your wheels. Why yeah. would you not want to do that? Yeah, yeah, nice. And, and helping seal punctures at the same time. Yep, absolutely. Mm. Um, mud guards. Yeah, I think that's a tricky an, one. They're a necessity. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm not alone here in saying that most people don't like the look of mud guards. I like one on the front. I think one on the front I, looks I, cool. I think I've become accustomed to the look and I think they're yeah. quite cool now, but I think that's just because you got so mm. used to how they yeah. look. This is the last one that I think is an absolute game changer and I think you've got a lot to say about it. Long and low, geometry change. Have we have we like have we hit a point where everything's changed in terms of geometry? Because suddenly everything is long and you know low. What? This is just the evolution thing again. Yeah, yeah. Like, it goes two ways, yeah. All right. Undeniably, bikes have got slightly longer and slightly lower and slacker through time, but that was always going to happen. Yeah. Just yeah. with the way bikes are designed, the trails are getting gnarlier, yeah. suspensions becoming more capable. Yeah. To, in order to ride a bike quicker or more technical terrain, it's got to adapt. It's got. It. However, I think some things that people look at, overlook on this sort of thing is the fact that the longest of bikes. They're definitely going to be really good for the tall people because bikes have never been big enough, whereas shorter riders have had the option to size up yeah, in the yeah, past. Yeah, I yeah. think that's been something that's been overlooked massively. Yeah, yeah. classically with uh, Greg Minar, world yeah. downhill champion multiple times, uh, 29 wheels come out, they changed the geometry to suit that bike, yeah. and he's, he finally says, after 20 years of being the greatest man bike of all time, yeah. at last, a bike that fits, fits me. me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, that's, that's exactly how I feel. I don't feel like I'm riding long bikes. I feel yeah. like I'm riding a bike that fits. Incredible, incredible. Right, that's some of the things that might work and have worked. Now let's do the fun bit and talk about some okay. things that definitely don't. Oh, there's plenty of those. Okay, failed trends. <laughs> this is funny. Plenty of these. <laughs> funny. Right, where are we going right. first? First one, magnesium bikes. Yeah. Now there was a point where someone decided every bike should be made out of magnesium and it was a bad idea. Well, I think... This is kind of like a Jurassic Park scientist moment. They were too busy <laughs> trying to do it. They didn't stop to think if they should do it. That's a good point. Do you remember that Kirk magnesium thing? Well, that's the one that really springs to my mind. Right, so I'm struggling. Did anyone else do it? Or was I, it just I don't know, but who cares? Yeah, like, it was that, that, weird. That bike looked amazing. Look at it. Did oh. you ever pick one up? No. They were about 20 stone. They're the heaviest thing in the world. I thought that was the point it was light. Yeah, it wasn't light. Oh, well, I, the I Kirk, kind of thought the, the Kirks point. were not light. No, no. Um, I always wonder what would happen if you set them on fire. <laughs> Remember that, yeah, would have been very, very bright. Yeah. Very, very bright. Very, very bright. Yeah, so magnesium bikes, they, they came and they're gone. Thank yeah. goodness. Put them in the bin. Um, oh, obscure wheels, disc wheels. Um, yeah, disc wheels. Mag yeah. wheels. Yeah. Actually, disc Where wheels are were, they all? Disc wheels were cool, though. They sounded good, at least. Well, it's a trend. They weren't that good. Yeah, I mean, um, John Tomac. weird tri spokes and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, John Tomac famously used the Tioga disc wheel. Yeah. He made it cool, so it was trendy. 
but did we really need them? Was it like rubber bands? Um, it was two discs made yeah. of sort of um, Kevlar type material and it had yeah. Kevlar strands instead of spokes <laughs> and they tensioned it together. They always reminded me of one of those things where people wrap lots of rubber bands up together and yeah, put them right, on their yeah. desk. <laughs> but, like but seriously, that. the concept was really good because yeah. what it enabled the, the wheel to do was actually have a little bit of squash to it. Right, right. So okay. that was the concept. Yeah. The only problem was they were made of quite a delicate material, mm. like, so sticks and other stuff could go through them. In fact, at a cross-country race once, I saw a guy that tacoed his back wheel with a yeah. disc drive on it. Oh. And you've got to bear in mind, in the mid-90s, these things cost about 400 quid. Which is Laced a lot. up a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of yeah. money. And I saw him try and like, stamp on it yeah. to get it right. And, uh, oh, no. <laughs> put his foot through it, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so we hung yeah, around for yeah, a bit just yeah. to see him really They did use the sound call as well. They sounded amazing. Yeah. It's like pushing a barrel down a hill. Yeah, it's very cool. It's very cool. The mag wheels, though, never really took off a mountain bike, and I guess because of the size, obviously in BMX, yeah. Skyway Tough, uh, Skyway... What was Skyway. It? The Skyway Just Tough Wheel 2. Um, yeah, that was the wheel I was the always curious. Have. Everyone yeah. always said if you buckled one, you could put it in your mum's freezer. No, that was a Z rim. Was it? Yeah. yeah but did anyone ever have a freezer that was empty enough I to don't put know. one in? I, yeah, I've never <laughs> seen a freezer big enough to put a wheel in. Yeah. I certainly haven't happen, got one. Doesn't happen, does it? Yeah, this big. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's probably the trick. They're like, yeah, yeah, that'll fix it. Yeah. But they knew no one could put it in a freezer. Marketing genius. <laughs> um, is, yeah, I know you've got a lot to say on this next one. Flex stem. Oh, yeah. Actually, we've got one of these. Oh, oh right check it out. I actually had one in this colour the first time round. So explain the concept, Dolly. What's happening? Pivot there, spongy elastomer there, and it moves. <laughs> At some point, someone thought it was a good idea <laughs> for your handlebars to move because yeah. it, this was lighter yeah. than a suspension fork and it wouldn't change the geometry of your bike. But it's not a suspension fork. No. It doesn't do what a suspension fork does. No. Wow, it's amazing that at one point people thought that was a good idea. But the thing is, when I had one, I loved it for about five rides yeah. until these bits bent. Oh God, it's just yeah. so scary. And then it was so many normal levels. stem. Yeah. What's this little red bit? What's that? That's just the cable hanger. So oh, I see. Okay. Back in the day, before disc brakes, you yeah. had your oh, cable, of cable route through there <laughs> and then down to your cantilever brakes. Yeah. yeah, no, it's definitely gonna. But I want to show you, right? This kind of concept, it's not gone away because I, I mentioned this on the show the other day. Um, that this Kickstarter project um, for a similar thing oh, yeah. for the seat, yeah. and I guess it makes more well, sense. Well, on do the you know seat. what? Cane Creek make a seat post called the Thud Buster. Yeah, it's yeah. still one of their biggest selling things. Yeah, I mean, for it's, like bike packing and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same idea. Yeah, they've moved it over onto the seat post. Now, Redshift made this uh, Kickstarter project. They were trying to raise twenty thousand pounds. Yeah, um, and I think they raised. Four hundred and thirty thousand pounds on this idea. It's out there. You can buy it. Look at that. That's like, that's like the evolution of a trend somewhere where it sort of works. I wonder what's different about that though than the Cane Creek one that already exists. I don't know. I don't know. But people want mm. it. People want that trend. They okay. don't want it to go away. But it's an interesting one. That it interesting. Is. One. Yeah. Um, definitely uh, like this idea. Uh, elevated chain stays. Oh, they looked look amazing. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But quite often the bike would be a bit baggy. Yeah, but it's gone away. Why has it gone away? Because um, it definitely looked good. Well, back then we had we were trying to make the chain stays as short as possible. Yeah. And you had three huge chain rings. Do you remember obviously the chain ring bolt circle size changed over the years and got smaller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To was start with they were huge. So you had to cram everything in and your tyre simply wouldn't go around with mud clearance. Yes. So yeah. they were like, well, let's move the chain stays up out the way so you've got more room down here. Got it. But then you're stuck with your drivetrain hanging down on the... <laughs> well, when you pedal, you kind of used to swing below <laughs> yeah. you, didn't and you? And your gears were changed by themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it was a crazy. Definitely a cool looking idea. Um, we were thinking earlier on, is the, the kind of um, downhill geometry and uh, design idea at the moment now we're bringing the chain up over the top mm. of, uh, of the linkage like a high pivot type high thing. pivot point mm. is that kind of like a, it's a reminiscent of it i guess feels a bit like that yeah but i, I guess, guess it's, it's, it's done thing. for suspension yeah but yeah. it does you're right it does share the same sort yeah, of looks yeah, to yeah, it yeah yeah i definitely. think that stuff looks great yeah does it work though uh, high pivot bikes do work great if they've got an idler, yeah. Yeah, but you were saying they're on, they only work for a downhill bike. I think so. There are some trail ones that exist, and I'm keen to spend some more time mm. on them. But yeah. the point is, with any transmission on a bike, you want yeah. you want it to be as frictionless as possible. Yeah, yeah. So you're adding more friction in. At some point, you're going to notice that. Yeah, yeah. Less so, so on a downhill bike than on a trail bike. Yeah. So that's the name I was trying to think of. The high pivot point. So is yeah. that in the evolution pot? Definitely. Right. Yeah. I think we put three things in there. Yeah. The evolution pot. Yeah. I think that's a new thing. That's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> You know what? 
News has been a bit slow over the last couple of months and it's always that way because a season has to have its ebbs and flows. Well, it's just about starting to flow. We've got so much happening this week, I can't believe it. Obviously, the Andes Pacifico has just come to an end. Unfortunately, it come to a nasty end for Neil Donoghue of GMBN because he took a rough crash, uh, banged his thigh, uh, really nasty bruising, meant he had to pull out the race, but more seriously, he had compartment syndrome. Basically, all the blood kind of got caught up and he needed surgery to release that pressure, else they could have lost a leg. I ain't joking. It was that bad, but thankfully, Neil is on the mend. Um, he's over in Chile now, chilling. Uh, and getting better, thank goodness. Now, the race itself was incredible, and we saw an absolutely amazing effort in the women's race from Florencia Espinera, who absolutely dominated. Um, she finished the race 15 minutes, I think it was, ahead of her nearest rival. She absolutely smashed this event. Um, in the men, she would have positioned very well. Um, she, she put everyone to shame, so it was a fantastic ride from her. And the Chilean clean sweep was put into action by Pedro Burns, who in the last couple of stages took the win uh, and made it a Chilean 1-2. So a fantastic event as always. Uh, the party certainly looked very good at the Andes Pacifico. Now, as I said, the action's coming thick and fast and Darkfest happened a few weeks ago and their review video is now out covering all of what went on, some brilliant footage. All those riders are just pushing out so much style. It looks absolutely incredible, but some of the tricks they're now doing over those huge jumps is getting a little bit ridiculous, but certainly a lot of fun to watch. Street racing is also happening in earnest and uh, Marcel Gutierrez took the win in Montserrat. He loves this sport of downhill street racing. It suits his powerful style to the T and he's performing well. Over in Brazil, Santos to be exact, Ben Moore was taking in some action on the street racing too. He didn't make the final unfortunately, but some great footage there of more street racing going on around the globe. Now it's really nice to see the XC season kicking off and the Copa Catalana is one race I've been waiting for and it was amazing to see Anton Cooper and Annie Lars take the wins in this race. Uh, I'm really excited about the XC season this year. I think there's going to be some fierce racing uh, and like I said, the course here at Copa Catalana looked absolutely amazing. Really dusty, dry, sweeping turns, but lots of fun and like I said, tight racing, but Cooper and Lars took it in the end. Joachim Nyman, the star of 20 inch trials riding from Sweden, has let it be known on his Instagram that he's moving up to the 26 inch wheeled mountain bike category, which means Jack Carvey, Nicholas Vallet, those stars of the mountain bike scene in trials, I've got someone new to worry about. Could he be the man to put pressure on them? Let's see this year, there's some fantastic riding. Look at these skills on display. That is a huge side op from Joachim. Can't wait to see what happens with his 26 inch riding career. Okay, so got a question for you. Oh, a question quiz for time. Yes. Love it. Love right, it. so this actually made me think of the question. Being a very early suspension product, at the time, there was the RockShox RS1 that came out. Yes, brilliant. The next model was called the Mag 21. Yeah. Yeah. What was it made of? What it be made of? Let's jump straight into fails and bales and come back to this in a minute. <laughs> is getting worse. I'm I sure. actually don't like watching this stuff anymore. I'm sure of it. I'm sure. Right, let's get back to that question. You asked me a question before, like what was the RockShox yeah. 
So no, we were talking about all sorts of off. random things that yeah. should be forgotten about from the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, surely it's aluminium. It's in the, the clues in the name, I think you're fine. Not mag, not magnesium. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, magnesium 21. That's that what it was. That is crazy. Yep, that's right. That is crazy. Well, I never would have thought that, and thank God that trend's gone away. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Goodbye, yeah. magnesium. Okay, right, it's time to look at some of your sends of the week. Let's see what you guys have been doing. Some good efforts yeah, well, there. Hey, um, yeah. Was one of those guys AY? Was I think that, it was. was on, that the on, same AY? On a full star spot, yeah, AY jumping that rock, that's that's the front flipping AY. I'm he's amazed back. he's still alive, to be honest. Yeah, I'm thinking of naming Sender. Oh, look at this guy, he's insane. AY, if you're watching, keep oh. keep doing what you're doing. Send us some more video clips, dude. That's what's riding is about. It's just amazing. Hey, he's yeah. going for it. Absolutely going for it. Right, it's time for some hacks and botches. Oh, yes. I love it. Hacks and bodges. Hacks and bodges. I love it. I love hacks and bodges. Hacks and bodges with chain reaction cycles are giving away a hundred pounds, right, to the person you choose who's done the best hack or bodge this week. Ooh. That's bloody brilliant. I get to choose. You get to choose. Awesome. You get to choose. Um, right. I'm gonna start you off with this one. It's Jacob who's built this amazing bike rack for his bike. Well, he actually built the He's whole built bike He's built the whole rack. thing. Look at that, it attaches, you can see there, it attaches to the bottom of the car where they would have the uh, No way, so that, that's like a, a two-layer towable yeah. mounted rack. So you've actually made kit. one. That's actually pretty Fair cool. Play. That's, that's so really cool, yeah. Jacob, you've done an amazing job there. Yeah. I like it a lot. And you are in the running. Hey, that's, that's that's really good. I'm well impressed. What you got, Doddy? What you got? Um, got one from Leon in Germany. I'm really into this. Oh, He's yeah. effectively using the sort of the space in his hollow yeah. bottom bracket axle. Tire plug. Made a homemade samurai sword type thing. Yeah, yeah. Tire plug, stab it in. Yeah. The storage in there. I so that would help you fix a tubeless tire. Um, puncture. puncture. Yeah. Really, really clever. And it's idea. already prepped, so the idea yeah. is you've got the hole in the tire, just blow. stab it straight in, pull it out, the little wormy bit stays in the tire. Brilliant idea. Nice Brilliant use idea. of space, that. Yeah, very, very that's great. Cool. One. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty smart. Yeah. Right, last up, we have got Ted. Look at this. This is a lovely, neat job. So what's Ted done? Bike so has he made this whole thing as well? Yeah, he's made the whole thing. He's done a lovely job of it and it's lockable. Oh, no, so he can leave idea. the bike in the car yeah. um, when he's not riding it and not worry about someone taking it, even if they broke in. What, or if, what if they nick the car? Then that, then it's the, the, he's lost the bike. <laughs> he's the lost car. the bike then. But, but short of that, that is really nice nice, that's a nice like, tidy solution to that. Okay, Doddy, so who are you going to go with? It's Jacob, Leon or Ted? Um, um, do you know what? It's tricky because I think what Leon's done, I think that's a great use of space on a bike. Yes. We have seen it a few times though, so not to suggest it's not really good, but we have seen it. Okay. Yeah. And then... Um, Whose was it in the back? It was it Ted's in the back of the car. Ted's I think that's very really, neat. really neat and tidy. Yeah. But I've also, I have actually seen that. But for someone to actually make a rack, yeah. I, I'm going to go with Jacob. Jacob, yeah. you have got a hundred pounds. However, 100 I just want to say it's, it it's pretty ugly looking, Jacob. <laughs> but I think what you've done is amazing because I wouldn't want to pay for a towable and then pay for a rack. I think yeah. by making a rack and bolting it straight on, 
winner, mate. I think Very that's really good. cool. Very good. 100 pounds on its way to you. Chain Reaction vo Cycles voucher. Let us know what you spend it on. Yeah. If you would like to try and win that money yourself, then just send your hack or bodge to the GMBN uploader. Um, the link's in the description down below. You can see it on screen. You've got no excuse, and that's where you send your bike vault pictures and all your viewer edits. Anything you want us to see, um, then that's the place to go. Get hacking and get bodging. Yeah. Okay, caption contest last week's photo. Look at this wheelbarrow, oh. Doddy. <laughs> Mohammed built that. Yep. Yeah, and we've got some good captions for them. it. Right, okay, and they're trying to win a GMBM water bottle right nice. now. Okay, so it's a good yep. price, good price. Um, Caleb Teresi says, sorry, Jack, I promise I will only barrow the fork. Oh. Get it? I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's quite good. Peter Bursick says, let's build some jumps. We'll barrel a basket, but I don't give a fork. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. But it that's bad, off. that one. That's bad. I don't think yeah. I read that one. I yeah. will barrow a basket. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if I read that one very well. Okay. And 10AC e bikes says, um, I will barrel a bike to ride these dirt jumps. They're all pretty They're bad. They're all pretty bad. They're all pretty fair. bad. They're um, a bit cringy. But I'm sorry, but Peter did make me laugh. Yeah? Yeah, it's terrible, but Okay, I Peter, let's know. build some jumps. I will borrow a basket and don't give a fuck. Um, you have got a GMB and yeah. water bottle for that one. Um, <laughs> I think that picture itself creates some rather cringy <laughs> captions. But sure. this week's one, here's your bottle on the way to you. Good job. Um, right, and if you would like to win a GMB and water bottle next week, then here is your picture. It's a wedding cake. Oof. Mountain bike wedding cake. Got one for that, Doddy? I don't know. That one oh, makes, I don't know. That one makes me feel a little bit... I do, I'm not sure know. how I feel about these sort yeah. of things. Anyway, right, caption that and you could win yourself a GMBM water bottle. Have a go. Right, let's take a look at what you guys have been saying in the comments and uh, sending us into our uploader. First off, last week we were talking about customization. Oh, yeah. I yep. see a little, I did some scribbles on my helmet and yeah. we were talking about other ways you could stick a bomb yeah, thing. I took some photos of your helmet. Yeah. yeah it's very cool. Uh, and the viewers have sent us in some of their customizations. Awesome, let's have a look. I like them a lot. Right, yeah. first up, I quite like this one helmet design. Nice. This yeah. is from Andrew um, and he is in Montana. I uh, wanted to share my helmet customization I did back in 2014 while I was living in Colorado. Nice. Got yeah. A nice. On the front there. That's yeah, cool that's isn't pretty it? pretty trick. The thing I've noticed about helmet designs right is you've got to not worry too much about what they look up look like really close. Yeah. Like I, uh, my helmet I used in Whistler, it looks fantastic. Mm. When you get close to it, you can see it's been done with pens and things like that. Yeah, but that just part of the character. You never really, thought. yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, I love mm. the helmet, but you never really, um, you never really get that close to someone's helmet. Where you, the distance you see them from, you can be a little you stand, bit. Yeah, okay, I get what you mean. It, you yeah, know? you're right. I think. Um, and I think that's definitely. But this one, one is those. great. Yeah. Yeah. Very very cool. Mm. Um, next up, we've got oh, oh, nice sticker, sticker bombing. Sticker bombing on a. Yeah. Um, oh, that's an old school chain. Uh, defender that one isn't it yeah that's rock ring. ring yeah rock that was ring. called yeah. the rock ring yeah um this is from that's Ian really nicely done in texas very yeah. neat that is i mean that's cool because the bike's kind of plain and he's just got a little bit of sticker bombing just to mm. bring it to life that's nice roll cap in the background as well actually. yeah it's quite stylish <laughs> yeah nice um next up oh, i like this a lot look at this yt look it's totally changed oh, the nice except the down tube yeah there. He, but he's gone with if you look at the original yeah. design of the bike you can see that uh, he's, he's followed the same he's places. followed the same colours, yeah. um, but really brought it to life. I love the bit it. on the chain stay in the yeah. inside of the seat stay. Very actually. nice, that. Hey, that's really trick. That is Ian in yeah. Texas. You have done an incredible job there with a bit of a... Uh, cool, that's my favourite so far. I think that's really tidy. Very good. Yeah. Um, and then we've got another kind of version of the same thing. That's Santa Cruz. And yeah. um, this is Gavin Santa Cruz Nomad. Um, and he has gone crazy with the customization, where he's, he's really gone to work with some colors on the oh, whole red, parts. Red, everything. Reds and blues. Um, and, and he's gone into some little detail color on the Santa yeah, Cruz decal. Decal, yeah, yeah. And on the Hope wheels, look. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Some stylish customization. Spend some money on that thing. I like it, I like Lovely. it. Lovely. I love the customization idea because I, yeah. I, I, I guess we all do it in our own way. Of course we do. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Right, what else you guys been saying? Let's take a look at them. Um, Blake was racing in Valparaiso and the oh, urban great video that was amazing. Yeah. Um, Alex Proctor said, very rarely comment, but I have to say huge props to the editors. This was an incredibly cinematic video. I tell you what, that was what's it. It was, yeah. I think that Tom Grundy did an absolutely incredible mm. job on filming this video. It looked amazing. So, Do you know that something I particularly that. liked that was captured about it was how nervous Blake was at times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so he's not scared of much, but you could tell he was actually yeah. quite bothered about racing. Oh, absolutely. And I tell you what, Blake, Blake's never been one for 
for like the big event. You know, he yeah. used to he didn't used to like competing as a, f a free rider. You know, he didn't like the competition element of it. Yeah. Um. So going in and entering that race probably took quite a lot of. Uh, yeah, what should I say? Some kudos to him because he, yeah. he, he really went for it. Um, Jacob Ferugia says, Well done, Blake. Racing is not about winning unless you're Neil, because Neil only wants to win. <laughs> yeah. um, and why didn't Neil race? We all know he shreds hard and is really fast. Well, I'll tell, tell you why he didn't race that. He was yeah. saving himself for racing the multi stage race, the Andes Pacifico. Of course. So if if he'd have had an accident in that, it would have been game over for his. Big event. Typical racer. Yeah. Typical racer. Yeah, good point there. And Luis Figueredo says, love everything about this video. The atmosphere, the editing, the mentality of tackling the event. Blake O, you magnificent creature. <laughs> You'll always have a spot in my fantasy downhill team. Well, that's a good idea until you won't get any until results. You, yeah, until you actually get Blake in there. Fast. Yeah. yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, some great comments and I uh, love how you picked up the editing on that video. It was a banger. Yeah. Right, let's take a look at what's coming up on the channel this week. Cool, lots coming up on GMBN this week. Doddy, what are you looking forward to? Actually, one of Blake's videos is uh, his five trail bike tricks for trail. But knowing Blake, it's probably six. Yes, yeah. he can't five. count. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, that guy can jib. He yeah. really can. He can come up with some brilliant stuff. So that is definitely It'll be good a, fun, but yeah. inspirational too. Yeah. Uh, more Blake and a little bit of Neil, I expect, on the behind the scenes on the urban downhill racing at Valparaiso. That's nice. going to be a really cool video because mm. you'll get to see how it all happened. And I think you'll get to see even more of Blake's nerves because... Yeah. He, he was really scared of doing that race. Um, and so that'll be a great video. Lots coming up on GMBN. Don't miss out this week. Make sure you see all of these videos. Okay, it's time for the bike vault. Let's take a look what you guys have sent in this week. First up, we oh. have got Sinews Mondraker June Cup. Close to my heart. Sorry, straight out. Super nice. It's really, really cool, isn't it? It's oh. in that, all in that all stealth black, black as well. Yeah, can't go, really go wrong in that one. I used to have one of those. Yeah, mega bikes there. Mega, very nice. Oh, oh, hello. I like this one. Patricio's Cannondale Trail 4. This is in Chile. Um, oh, do you know what? Like, It's got a GMB it, mudguard on it. It kind of breaks all the rules of what you would send into a bike vault, but I like that. I, I super nice that. Go yep, on. super I nice. Super nice it. No, I like a hardtail. I really do. Um, very nice. Uh, next up, oh, we've got lovely. Dylan's Common Sal. Nice snow shot. Very cool. It's nice. It's definitely one of those nice. Lock bottles on there as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Very so that trick. just pulls straight off. The magnet ones, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, next up. <laughs> oh. So I looking. Be, I looked at the back. That's got to be Ray's, isn't it? It yeah. looks like Ray's. Like Ray's indoors park, mountain bike park. How much Cleveland. fun does that place look? We've got to go there. I want to ride that place. Yeah. Look at that. That's a super nice for just being at Ray's. And yeah, the super nice. The fact that you're there on a specialised fat boy is just brilliant, and I. I love all the colours on it. I love it, very colour coordinated. But well, I'm not sure about the little squeaky thing on your bars. But yeah. we gave you super nice anyway. Yeah, actually, if I'd spotted that pig before, I wouldn't have given it a super nice. <laughs> I might take that super nice back. Can you? It's a nice. Right, it's, it's back. It's nice. But Ray's Park is definitely super nice. Uh, hey, that's A Wire's bike! No! Yes! Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> AY's in the bike vault, love it. Our man from Jamaica giving us the gist. Awesome. Keep them coming, AY. Yeah, keep, keep getting involved. Coming. Love your riding. Um, next up, we have got oh. Joanne's, or Juan's, Cannondale Flash. I'm not I'm sure. Bit, I'm a bit of a sucker for a, a Cannondale with a lefty on it. It's either Juan oh. or Joan. What would you go with? Where are they from? I'll say Joan. I think it's Joan. I hope it's Joan. I think I said Juan and it's Joan. <laughs> oh, it's Joan. Jones, Cannondale, Flash. I love a Dale and I love a Lefty. Oh, it's super nice from me. The moment the Cannondale came up, I was giving it super yep. nice. Um, next up, GT Fury. Is that a Fury, is it? No, uh, Sanction. Sanction, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's nice. It's nice. It's Good nice. colour. Hey, what do you think of the new GT Fury with the whole, like, um, you know, that's got the, the chain, high, pivot. high pivot point thing? Super nice. Super nice. But not this one, nice. I think, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a good colour. It's good. But I, no. I prefer it's, drive side myself, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's in New Zealand, so it's a good spot. Next up, oh, look at that. El Canyon Spectral with the little, little uh, box there in the top of the sandwich, sandwich triangle. Pocket. Yeah, yeah, quite like that. Would you keep in your sandwich box? That's got to be a sandwich, sorry. That's it's a sandwich, sandwich shape, shape, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. It's, it's nice. I'm not sure, I'm not mad keen on the angle. This no, is, it makes it look a bit steeper than the bike actually is. Uh, I don't know whose it is, actually. It's. It's. Oh, so take yeah, it, Glen Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. 
Oh yeah, what Ooh. a shot. That's nice. This is Ali's Lapierre. Um, that's a really nice shot. I really like that. The bikes. Nice. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. I'm not feeling it from Doddy. I can mm. kind of sense when he's into it. And I, I think it's really nice, but it's one of those colour bikes that's really hard to shoot and get the colour right. Yeah, yeah. Am I mistaken, or is that a lot brighter than it looks? I right. think it probably is. Yeah. It's hard to tell. You think it's more nice than it's looking right? I though. think so. Yeah. Well, you, that's what you're supposed to be capturing, you know. Oh yeah. Look at this, David that's Kotick cool. Soul. I quite like a Kotick. Oh, you know? really, really like understated, it. aren't they? That's super nice for me. Yeah, cool. Super nice. Really like that. That is in Durham. Um, next up, we've got a KTM from KTM. Martin. Uh, in where the hell I is think, this? I think he's broken the rules, so. though. Oh really? What's he done? Oh no, he's got he's got. A, oh no, two rear mud guards. I didn't say it. You, you said it earlier. He's got two rear two mud guards. And he's well, actually, actually, he's got, got two four, on the he's got two got on the front mud guards. <laughs> It's not. It, it's, it's nice. It's, it's barely nice. Oh, dude. Man, four mud guards. Come on, we've got a standard. What's here. wrong with two? Martin, <laughs> sort yourself out. Send it in again with two mud guards. I'll give you a super nice, all right? That's the best deal I can do. But right now, <laughs> you're not there. Okay, next up. It's Jeremy's Marin. Oh, I like that colorway. That is nice. Yeah. It looks really it's retro, nice. doesn't it? But it it's is. not. It's obviously a fairly new bike. Yeah. It's nice. Good looking frame. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, it's and, nice. And that's it. We're out of the oh. Bible all this week. It's very, very good. I like that's that. Good. That's some good ones. Keep in it there. coming. Um, yeah, if you want to send your bike vault in, then make sure you go to the GMBN uploader and send us your bike. You'll get super nice. Awesome abuse from Martin. <laughs> I wasn't that <laughs> bad. All right, cool. Yeah, so a uh, competition's still going. It's a Flowtron post by uh, FSA, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so that's a 125 mil drop in 31.6 and 30.9. We're giving away one of each. Uh, it's ongoing, so the link below will take you through to that competition. If you haven't entered already, get involved and you can win a drop a post. Yeah, good luck. Um, right now, let me remind you about the GMBN shop. Of course, we've got all our great swag in there. And if you don't believe me, have a look at these guys who've already got their GMBN jerseys and this is where they're wearing them. Look at them all. Yeah, get involved. Look at that. Look, they're all mm. around the world. Um, so you can get involved and maybe you could send us in your GMBN jersey shot. Here's Doddy. Oh, well, that's me. Wearing yeah. his. Love it, love it. Um, I tell you what else we've got in the shop at the moment. We've got GMBN socks. They're back in stock. Oh, these are good as well. Nice these. and long. I love these GMBN socks. Very Optimum nice. gap between top of sock and bottom of knee pad. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect mm. gapage. Um, and we've also got the uh, frame guards. They're in the store. Oh yeah, now. they've just come in. I forgot. Very nice. Yeah, Blake and Neil had all of them before they went yeah, on a trip, yeah, didn't they? Took they? Them. Yeah, I had them for like them. Yeah. a few days. <laughs> and they were gone. Yeah, so the shop's happening. Get over there and get involved. Um, we really appreciate your support with all that stuff. Um, so thank you for watching the Dirt Shed. It's been amazing. Doddy, it's been ace having you. In the it's dirt been shed. amazing being back. Yeah, I love yeah. talking about all those trends. Yeah. So, uh, of course, made me very nostalgic. Oh. Um, yeah, if you want to stick with us, then why don't you click over there for enduro riders to watch this year? There's some great riders um, in the competition. And over here for a POV of Blake's uh, Valparaiso run. With you know, some hilarious commentary. Yeah, in that. very, very yeah. good. Very good. Um, hit the old globe to subscribe. And last up, give us a thumbs, us up, thumbs up before we go. See you next week.